Back in the beginning of WHAS-TV in the 1950s and 60s, the TV station was producing documentaries regularly. The news director at the time wanted the work to be meaningful and thought-provoking. One of the first was called Scars on a Mountainside, digging into the strip mining debate. Shay McAllister takes us back in this week's WHAS 11 Vault. WHAS produced one documentary almost every month, including the award-winning Scars on a Mountainside. Bill Small was the news director at the time, before going on to become vice president of CBS News and then president of NBC News. He reported on the documentary and Fred Wishy produced. It was a controversial topic. There are some who are not eager to see a report on strip mining. The documentary described eastern Kentucky before the stripping started, in the view of a Kentucky lawmaker who lived in the area. Our hills here in eastern Kentucky are very beautiful in their natural state. Covered with timber and green, this uh, is, a, uh, is a fairy tale land of natural beauty. And then that same lawmaker described the scene after the strip mining process took hold of the hills. That leaves a mountain that has been changed or transformed completely from uh, what was once a stable, water-holding, timber-growing entity to a mass of loose dirt, broken rocks, and desolation. He wanted the mining to stop and for efforts to focus on reclaiming the mountains, but he was met with pushback. The team also interviewed Bill Sturgill, the owner of the largest coal operation in the country. The utility industry, which is the growing market for coal, has uh, invented new, new, new equipment and they, new processes for burning coal that makes an attractive market. He said without his company, employment, energy and economy would be lost. As Mr. Sturgill points out, this outcrop coal is cheaper coal. The market for deep mine coal is dwindling. But what did the impacts really look like? Bill Small, Fred Wishy, and a photographer went to find out. Seven years ago, in another hollow, beef hide hollow, which strides the Letcher and Pike County lines, they stripped the ridges. I went to beef hide hollow to see the results. Once a prosperous valley with apple orchards and pasture land that contain 100 families, many who have lived there for generations. Today, only half a dozen or so families remain. The orchards brutally ripped by giant boulders that came rolling down the mountainside. The team also talked to those most impacted, the people living in coal country. Mr. Roy, what has the strip mining done to this area? Well, it destroyed the whole thing. It destroyed the whole thing. It destroyed the whole thing. It them all out. You had to leave, you know. How long have you been here? How long have you had this store? Ever since 1916. And what, what place I've been? July, I believe, 1916. There were a lot more people here then than there are today. Oh, yes. Small said the aftermath of stripping was apparent. So the question became what can be done to restore the once beautiful mountains? Coal company leader Bill Sturgill suggested his team needed time to study the land and the methods to reclaim it. Small ended the documentary with these final words. No one is sure of strip mining. We need research to be sure. Action is needed soon. Since strip mining began, experts estimate 500 mountaintops have been demolished in eastern Kentucky. What's left now? A semi-green pasture that regulators and coal companies agreed was close enough.